Hey there, good morning, it's Jane. How is everybody today? We had a little bit of a an ice storm and it seems to be ending here in Connecticut, but it is pretty gray out, so I'm excited to work on our beautiful spring themed tray. And if you didn't catch the previous two videos, you can just go to Surface Anthology on Facebook and you'll see them if you just scroll around. And I also will be posting on YouTube. And today I may even be live on YouTube right now. I don't know because it's the first time I'm trying it. So who knows? I, can't, I don't think I can see comments. So if you guys have questions or anything, please leave them in the comments and I will look after to answer those. All right, so what we did or what I did, I'm like the queen, I swear. <laughs> what I did is I painted this really super rustic tray. I love trays. And I painted it in mud paint. I mixed sky and simply white to create this really pale blue. I wanted something very, very pale to go behind the rose chins paint inlay, which I love and I've used it a lot. And now what I want to do, because it's it's like super clean, I want to distress it with a sanding block. I don't use sanding a lot on furniture, but for a project like this to distress it, um, I think it's going to work really well. This is super rustic wood. It's reclaimed wood. Um, and then I'm going to use the Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Wax, the new wax that I absolutely love. To seal it. So what I'm going to be using is, is a used sanding block. I love these and I do keep them and use them over and over um, because you can get different effects with you know when they get worn down so they're not so coarse. I'm going to use this big beast of a brush. I use this to get rid of all the dust. We can't leave any dust on this. Um, or anytime, oh, and I just kicked up dust, or anytime when we're waxing because we don't want the paint dust to mix in with the wax and create like an, another color. Unless you want to create another color wax, and you can certainly do that, but I don't. So I'm going to be dusting away um, everything that I produce when I sand with this brush. I'm using one of my big beasts, my big um, waxing brush. I always use a natural bristle brush to wax with. This is what I'll be using. I've also got a microfiber cloth. So after I brush the dust away, I'm gonna go give it a once over with this. And of course, my, my palette that I've been using this week. Um, I always scoop the wax out, put it on the palette, and that's where I pick up my wax because I don't wanna contaminate my wax. All right, so I'm gonna move this stuff aside, wear your really crappy clothes when you do this because you're going to get very, very dusty. And let's begin. So I'm going to start, and I and I did kind of cheat because I had to see what it was going to look like. But I'm going to start just distressing this along the edges and the corners where it would naturally get distressed. You can also use scraping tools. I have metal scrapers I use, but this is fine. And when you're doing this, every once in a while, You can take your sanding sponges, get another one and smack them together like outside to get the dislodged paint dust out. I went to Catholic school, grade school, and we used to do this with the erasers. I loved it because I got to leave the classroom for a few minutes. All right, but you see that nice wood I've got coming through. That's all I want.
man, if you are sensitive to dust, please wear a mask. I'm not going to talk too much while I'm doing this because I can inhale the dust. So be careful about that and wear a mask. this away let's do the inside this is what I'm really interested in seeing so give that a little smack Now the first thing you notice, see that green kind of moving around? That is just the paint dust. That's why we're brushing it away. Brush this away. Whew. That's a lot of paint dust. fiber cloth and wipe away. And this would be a great um, technique to do outside on a nice day. So I'll make sure this is really rustic wood. And I'm going to give it a smack. And there we go. And there goes my, my kids got me a clapper. I <laughs> said I wanted a clapper for Christmas for, the, for my, a light in my studio. And they actually got it for me. And every time I make noise, the light goes on and off. It's hilarious. All right. So first observation, this is like the first time I've done this. There is a little bit of the transfer. I don't know if you could see it here. Very faint of the green color into the blue. I really like the way it looks. It looks like old wallpaper. But that's something. And this is why I tell everybody, you know, I'm like a broken record. You have to do a test. Do a test on a little project like this. Every paint line is different. Sometimes even the colors are different because of the different pigments in the paint or the different base, and we've talked about that before. 
So that's what I'm noticing here. And it'll be interesting to see how the wax, um, how the wax interacts with that. So let's say I've got my clear wax, my Miss Mustard Seed, which I truly love. I'm very, very picky about wax. And I, I love this wax. It has a, it has this really nice scent to it. It's not heavy. It's not chemically. It's a natural product. And it just, it smells really, really good. All right. So I just load up my brush and brush it on. And you know you hit everything because the paint gets a little bit darker where you went over. And I'm actually gonna go all the way around the sides and then we'll do the center. And get in those corners. I like to do a nice veil of wax. This wax, the Authentico wax, the mud paint wax. When I'm out of Authentico, I'll be bringing the mud paint wax and I'll have that along with Miss Mustard Seeds waxes. They don't need to be wiped off. You, I brush on, a, again, a thin veil and then I just let them dry and they're beautiful. So there's no stickiness. There's no having to put it on and wipe it off. Very, very easy to use. Okay, now let's get the center. So what I'm seeing is the inlay is great. It's not smearing at all. The only thing that happened when I was distressing it was probably I'm taking away some of the inlay paint and with as I go back and forth with the sanding sponge, it's embedding it into the mud paint. And um, that's why we see that. It's kind of like a transfer of, it's not a transfer, but a, a paint particle transfer, if that makes sense. Because it's beautiful now. There's no smearing at all with this wax. Okay. So there, look at how beautiful that is. I love this painting <laughs> so much, oh my God. Um, so I'm gonna do the sides now. And if you follow me, hopefully you do, um, we made those little, the little It Takes a Village in our private Facebook group. Whoops, I didn't put my wheels on. It's called um, The Painted Cottage, so definitely join. But we made, um, myself and three other decorative painters, made these cool little houses out of wood, you know, sort of two-dimensional. And I used the Grisse paint inlay, and I love them so much, I'm going to be putting them above some doorways in my house. So I will post pictures of that. I'm like, what can I do with these houses? And all of them were beautiful. Um, the other painters in the group are Joni of Weathered Wings, really talented. Um, Kim of For the Nest, also really talented. And then Tammy of Flippin' Furniture, who, again, is super talented. And they everybody came up with these really, really unique designs. Truly, we didn't plan it. We kind of didn't look at each other's work because we knew, you know, we wanted to just keep it super unique to our brands, our, our vision. All right, so that's it for waxing. That's how easy waxing is. And this brush, honestly, I've had them for years. Um, a little tip, when you have your wax brushes like this, this one is great. Put on it, write on it, clear wax, brown wax, black wax, because 
as much as you clean them, there could still be a little bit in there. And that way you have one just dedicated for clear and you won't get any transfer of any, of, of any other colors. And I do use scrubby soap. Another tip, I use scrubby soap for all of my brushes. I absolutely love it. All right, you guys, our beautiful tray is finished and I absolutely love it. Let me hold this up. So I distress the edges and the corners. And if this doesn't say spring, summer, I don't know what does. But it reminds me of, well, it is, it's rose chintz. But those um, little thatched roof English cottages, you know, um, if that's what it reminds me of. It's just so beautiful. So give it a shot. If you have any questions, I can't see any comments now. I'll try to figure, figure that out, tech tech stuff and uh, but ask me in the comments on Facebook or YouTube and it's surface anthology on YouTube and I will do my best to answer if I don't have the answer I will find it for you so you guys if you've tried the paint inlays let me know if you've done my workshop I've heard some good things I created a little kit so people could try the inlays because it is it's a totally new technology this is completely original to the to iron orchid and people don't want to commit to buying the whole pack you get eight pages of inlays so i created a little kit with a virtual workshop and um and it's a great way to try the inlay without investing a huge amount of money and if you're interested in that actually just go to chalkmercantile.com and click on workshops and you'll see it in there so thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. 